today is the day. Welcome back to 3D Printing 101. My 3D Printing Ninjas, today is the day when we make our first print. So if you're ready, let's get started. Step one, plug in your printer. This is, this is assuming that you already have your printer and it's already built. Plug in your printer. And next we have to turn it on. O stands for off and the one means on. It's on. Turn on the printer. Okay, now the screen should light up or whatever user interface that you had. Okay. Now your screen should be lit up. Let's go through the basic controls of your 3D printer. So if we click the info screen, which just goes back to the start, you have motion. If we go to motion, we have move axis, auto home, and disable steppers. Uh, note that all of these controllers are gonna be a little bit different depending on which printer you have and what year it is. They're always updating it. But the main functions are going to be similar. I would recommend going through, taking five or 10 minutes, and just looking through all the functions. I'm going to explain what they mean in this video. So just follow along. We go to motion. See move axis. So if we click on move X, you can select move 10, move 1, or move 0 0.1. I'm going to select move 10. Now, if I turn it, so this is the x axis. You can just control it from here. The y axis is the bed. Now, if we go to the Z axis, the Z axis is going to work different from the X and Y axis. The X axis uses a belt and so does the Y. The Z axis actually uses this rod and when it spins, it pushes up this whole section. So if we go to the Z axis. It moves much slower than the other ones. Okay, so there is a fourth motor that you can control on here, and that is the extruder. As we covered in an earlier video, the extruder is just what pushes it out. So when you change this, it's not going to move it. It's not going to move this part at all. It's just going to push the filament in or pull it out. So if you click on extruder, it says hot end too cold. You can proceed, but you should not proceed. If you try to extrude when the hot end is cold, then the filament won't be able to get through. If you have 1.75 millimeter or 2.85 millimeter diameter plastic and you're trying to squeeze it down to 0 0.4 millimeters, that's going to be pretty difficult as you can probably just reason. Uh, so we'll wait to do that. You can also auto home. So if we click auto home, that is going to, no matter where it is on here, it's going to move it to the bottom corner. And that is just, it's just good for calibration. And I like to do it before all my prints. Okay. The other thing that this does is it sets the nozzle to the baseline height. It's zero high. If we go to the info screen, you can actually see the coordinates. Everything is at zero. So when we're leveling our bed, it's important that we auto home before we do that. So then we go to motion. You can also disable steppers because I have not disabled the steppers yet, but 
I have not disabled the steppers yet. And when I try to move this, don't push too hard. Uh, nothing, nothing will move. So we disable steppers. You might even be able to hear it. That just disables the motors. So now we can move this freely. We can move the bed freely. So now let's go through how to level the bed. If your printer has an auto bed leveling system, you don't need to do this. And this part's going to be faster for you. The first time you level your bed is always the hardest. It always takes the most time because the printer, the printer bed has, it's not even close generally to where it's supposed to be. So what I like to do is the sticky note tray. Take a sticky note. Put the printer in the corner. The, uh, put the hot end in the corner. You're basically, when you run this under, you can see how far away the nozzle is. It's really far away. So we're just going to move this. You can sort of see which direction it's moving. And so to start, we're just going to get it pretty close, but not quite there. Go to the next corner. That one's already pretty close. This corner. It's a little too close. And the last corner. And make it a little closer. Then we can make it a little bit closer. So now it is relatively level. Not quite. But the problem is the nozzle is too far away from the bed. If the nozzle is too far away from the bed, it's not going to, the first layer is not going to stick to the build plate. But if it's too close, then it'll just be running into it and it'll get taped into the bed. You'll ruin your bed and you'll ruin your nozzle. So what we want to do is we want to find the happy medium. This is going to take a little bit of practice. You might not get it on your first time, but that is okay. So. Take a sticky note or some piece of paper that's similar. Move it under. So right now I feel no resistance. I feel no resistance at all. We're just going to go move it. I'm just going to move it slowly up until we feel a little bit of resistance. So I'm starting to feel a little bit of resistance. So I'm going to go to the next one. Again, just move it slowly up until I feel, yep, there it is. It shouldn't be super tight, so tight that you can't move it, but you should be able to feel, and you can even hear, that, that it is kind of sandwiched between the two. Next one. <laughs> Make sure that you're spinning uh, the wheel in the right direction. Uh, I always forget which direction you're supposed to spin them. A little bit tighter. I feel I'm starting to feel a little bit of resistance. Now we have a little bit of resistance in all of the corners. It's going to take a, a little bit of practice, like I said, to figure out exactly how tight 
the nozzle to the print bed you want it to be. Now, it is different for prints, and we'll talk about that in a different different video. But the most important thing is that they're all the same. Every corner you feel a pretty similar amount of tension to the ones around it. That just means that it's level. If print bed is if the printer is not leveled, print bed is not leveled, then your the print is not going to work. Uh, it's going to be inconsistent, and you're going to have warping and all kinds of issues. So it should be a little bit. So when you're going through, I like to make it so that it is a little bit difficult to move. Like right now, I can feel that there is some tension, but it's not difficult to move at all. So, yeah. Like I can't push it. When it's looser, I can just push this from the back and the, the sticky note will still slide. But nope. So you need, yeah, you need the other, the other hand to, to pull it in order to work that. So that one I'd say is pretty good. This one also feels pretty good. It feels pretty similar to the other ones. Now that we have these two set up, we're going to try to make all of the rest of them the same. So move this. This one is way too tight, way too tight. If you accidentally make the nozzle too close to the bed, that's okay, you can change it, but be careful, because if it's too tight to the bed and you move it along, it could scratch the build plate and you don't. Go over here. Again, I'm not trying to figure out how tight I want it to be. I'm just trying to make it the same as this one. Something important to realize here is when you change one, you change all of them. It's just a square. So if you tighten this one, the other ones are going to dip up a little bit more. So when you change one, even if the other ones were totally fine previously, you have to go th back through and check them. Sometimes you have to do this a few times, especially when it's your first time leveling the bed. You change one, you change all of them. So that one feels good. Oh, yep, now that one's too loose. So we're going to tighten this a tiny bit. Yep, and that feels exactly how I want it to. So go back here. Yeah, those feel the same. I say that's pretty good. Now I'm just going to go through a few different points on the print bed to make sure that it's level on the whole thing and not just in the corners. If it's level in the corners, then it should be level everywhere, but you never know. You might have a warped print bed, and that is not good. You're going to need to replace that. And now, now that the print bed is leveled, it's going to auto home. There's no filament in it right now, but you might find that when you level the bed with it heated up already, you get a more accurate result. But we don't have any filament right in it right now, so it should be okay. Again, this is going to take a little bit of experimentation. It depends on so many factors and what you're printing in general. So it's going to be difficult to get the filament out of the nozzle right now because a lot of times the build plate hangs over the bed a little bit. In this case, it would be okay. 
what we're going to do is we're going to disable steppers. Now, either move axis, move Z. It doesn't have to move up a lot, but it does have to get up enough to the point where the filament can actually come out. We're going to put the filament in now. Now we're going to go to temperature, and here you can see that you can either heat up the nozzle, click here, you can control, <clears throat> if you click here you can control the exact heat of the nozzle. Go to bed, you can also control exactly how many degrees you want the bed to be. Fan speed. Here, you'll so see this fan starts to spin. I set it back to zero. It stops. My printer, though, and a lot of printers have preheat PLA, preheat ABS, sometimes preheat PETG, but usually you just have these two. You can just click on preheat PLA, and it has what the usual what the usual uh, It has the information that people usually use for PLA saved in here. So you can just go, oh, I'm sure, preheat PLA. You can either preheat PLA, which heats the nozzle and the bed. You can preheat PLA end, which just heats the, the nozzle, the hot end. Or you can preheat PLA bed. So we're going to preheat PLA end. And wait. If you take a look at the display screen, you'll also see here that it shows both the temperature that it's set to and the current temperature. So when it's heating up, there's going to be a difference between it. And sometimes it will fluctuate by a few degrees, but in general, you want those to be the same. And they should be. If you take a look at your filaments, a lot of times you can find printing information. This one says 3D printer filaments, PLA, 1.75 millimeters, 1 kilogram. Printing temp 205 Celsius to 220 Celsius. So if if your printer filament has a specific temperature or specific settings that it says to use, sometimes it'll even have the bed temperature, generally a sign that you should use that. When you're heating up, uh, when you're heating up your printer so that you can install the filament, it doesn't necessarily have to be as hot as when you're actually printing. So we should be totally fine installing these, even though it's five degrees colder than it says it should be. So when we unroll the filament, you're gonna see that it has a pretty big curve in here. And a lot of filaments have this hole, uh, and that's just where you put the filament through. So it's gonna have most likely a pretty sharp curve at the end. So what we wanna do is take our flush cutters. If for some reason your printer didn't come with these or you don't have them, you can just use scissors or something similar. You want to go to the point where it's not really curved anymore. Take these and you want to go at a 45 degree angle. Now the reason that you want to have it at a 45 degree angle and not just a normal 90 degree angle is just because it's going to make it so much easier to put it into the printer. Also, if you have any weird curves at the end, it's going to make it hard. So make sure you have a pretty straight section. And if there are any huge, you know, bends or kinks in it, just cut those off. Now you'll see it slowly coming out. Just want to squeeze the extruder. 
slowly push it out. You want to keep pushing until you get until you get a consistent strand like this. It's important that you keep pushing it through until it reaches the hot end. Otherwise, things are not going to go well. Your first layer of the print is going to be all messed up. You should put the filament roll onto the spool holder, and that's just going to help it keep it in place. I have my spool holder separate. That was something I just added on. Usually for this printer, it's either mounted to the top or to the side, but I like this because it gives me, I don't need to use as much vertical space. And also it helps keep the, the filament going straight and it doesn't bend when it's trying to go in. And this just helps prevent, you know, things getting all jumbled up and Fortunately, sometimes fail prints. Okay, now we are almost there. It's time to initiate the print. So let's auto home one more time. And we're also going to preheat the bed. So we can go to temperature. Now I'm just gonna use the preset for, for the uh, PLA bed. So I'm gonna hit preheat PLA. And because the nozzle is already there, it's just going to stay at 200. But now it's setting the bed to 60 degrees. This is also a good time to make sure that your, your print bed is clean. Good way to clean it is just with isopropyl alcohol. Put a little bit on here. It's just a microfiber cloth. If you use something like a paper towel, that just increases the chances that you know little particles are going to fall off and get stuck in your print. Give it a wipe in. Clean this guy. Try not to touch the build plate with your fingers once you wipe it down because when we touch stuff, we get our, our oils from our hands onto it, and that is that could possibly make the print not stick to the bed. All right, now that both the nozzle, the hot end, and the bed are all heated up, we can start the print. So we're going to go to, let's scroll down, print from media. Make sure that your SD card is in here. If your printer did not come with an SD card, then I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson. But for now, we're gonna go print from media. And mine already had uh, a file that was installed on it just as a test print. So I'm gonna click on that. Looks like it's a cat. Start print. Print. Yep, and you'll see here that it's going up now from 200 to 225 for the PLA. That's okay, even though it doesn't fit inside the range. I'm still going to go with it. There we go. Might take a minute for the filament to start coming out. Yeah, but it should print a line of filament on the side. Yeah. It's a good idea to monitor the first layer or the first few layers, especially when it's your first print, just to make sure that everything is going well. If you're looking at it, it's printing, and for some reason, something went wrong. It's not level. Like If it's inconsistent, some parts of the filament that it, it's printing, you can see are thicker and some parts of it are thinner. It's probably a sign that you should re-level your bed. Now, especially when you're starting out, it's a good idea to keep an eye on your printer. I have a smoke detector in here just so it, it lets me know if something goes wrong. Most likely nothing will, so you don't have to be worried about it and anxious. But it's a good idea to keep an eye because things do happen. You also don't want your printer to totally fail that you knowing. So yeah, definitely keep an eye, especially on the first few layers. I always look at the first layer of my print. If the first layer goes well, that just dramatically increases the likelihood that the print is going to go well. All right, great job. You got your printer going. I would highly recommend that you take a picture of this, snap a picture, and post it to the community to let people know how you're doing 
on your 3D printing journey. We're going to skip ahead and show you the final print. Five hours later. All right, it's been about five hours and the print is finally done. It looks great. So now let's take it off of the build plate. Now, because I have this removable and flexible bed, just bend it and it pops right off. Because the bed is so clean and because we just leveled it, this pops off too. If something is really stuck, you can use the scraper again, uh, but just be careful. Now, this thing that you see on the bottom of the print, you actually remove it because it's not a part of the model at all. It's what we call a raft. Now, rafts are just, we'll learn about a little, we'll learn more about them later, but rafts are just to stabilize the print during the process of printing because when you've got something that's moving around on top of it for five hours and 20 minutes, sometimes things fall off. So it just helps with layer adhesion, bed adhesion. We'll talk about that later. But basically, it just stops this from falling off or wiggling around um, while it's printing. And here you'll also see how long it took. So in this case, it took five hours, 20 minutes, and 20 seconds. So this can be helpful if you're printing a bunch of the same part or you're trying to figure out how to schedule the prints so you can get a project done in time. This is a really useful tool. So great job today, guys. You made your very first 3D prints. Take a picture, post it in the community. I really want to see what you made, and I'll see you in the next lesson.